so Neil in Facebook, even though he's not using Super Chat, asked a question I just think is too uh, important not to, not to at least give an indication of an answer because I don't think we can answer it fully okay. right now. But he asked the question that, that most religionists who are not that familiar with objectivism ask, and that is, why be good without a, a higher moral code, right? If, if, if morality doesn't come from God, then where does it come from? Um, higher, I assume, Neil means from God rather than just a moral code, a good moral code. So you want to take a stab at the, at the, yeah. the condensed answer to that? Well, this is actually the, the, the big question that everybody in the comment section uh, on the Quillette article was asking, because I didn't really say, uh, and I didn't have time to say it in the article itself, uh, what I did do was I linked to an article that Ankar Gatte wrote for New Ideal, which I encourage people to look up uh, about how to have uh, morality and happiness without religion. And I mean, in, in essence, what, what he illustrates is uh, first, the shortcomings of religious morality, but then second, what Ayn Rand's alternative uh, to this is and, and her view that, look, uh, just like you can just like you can have, you can make scientific discoveries and observations about what kind of food is good or bad for the body, uh, philosophy can also make scientific observations and discoveries about what kinds of ways of life more generally are good, not just for the body, but for the body and the mind. And uh, a morality is a code of values that helps guide the the overall course of your life, uh, and you know, in her view, there's there's two basic facts about human beings that form the basis for a moral code. One is uh, that uh, as living creatures, we have to survive by a definite uh, process of actions. Uh, the way that we survive is using our minds to figure things out about the world, uh, to create values, and to be happy. And then the second important fact is that we have to make a choice. Uh, to use our minds and to pursue these values. And we need morality to help us guide uh, our choices. And uh, it, it helps us, if you look at Ayn Rand's uh, uh, book, The Virtue of Selfishness, especially essay, The Objectivist Ethics, she lays out uh, a list of principles and virtues that she thinks aids, uh, aids us in this kind of life. And I should mention, I did a, I did a course uh, at Ocon this past summer uh, on Galt's speech from Atlas Shrugged, and the uh, it'll go up on YouTube eventually, but the first part of that uh, course was on her idea of the morality of life Good. as laid out in Galt's speech in Atlas Shrugged. Good. Good. It might be worth putting that up as a separate video, just that, that, that portion of your course, because it's such a common question. It, it's, uh, it's, it's, it comes up all the time, and it's really the if we can cook people in that, if people get that, then it's much easier to get the rest of the philosophy. And it's something that I've noticed. There's this whole discussion of right now uh, between Jordan Peterson and his critics about about this issue. Yep. Uh, and it came up in the in the session that you did with Greg yep. and Jordan Peterson at the, at Ocon. How do you derive facts from values? Yep. And uh, just one quick comment on that, which is that I think an underappreciated aspect of Ayn Rand's answer to that question uh, is that is is one is the facts about life, but second is the issue of choice and that you've got to choose to live. You've got to want to live uh, for these facts to apply to you. I think that some of the things that Jordan Peterson has got his finger on are pointing us to the fact is that one of those points is not enough. It's not just that there are things that biological entities require to stay in existence. It's also that for human beings, there's a choice you've got to make for any of those facts that have any force. Yes. I think people like Sam Harris, for example, will talk just about the one point and deny the other one, deny yeah, the relevance. He denies it. He doesn't just ignore it. He denies yeah. it, right? Because he says there is no choice. Yeah, and, and you can see why without both of them, um, you know, both Sam and Jordan are both missing, uh, you know, and if you if you put them together, but but it, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. It doesn't, it's not gonna, quite that easy. Um, good. Yes, I know. I think I think for those of you interested more in this, read uh, Ankar Gatte's essay in um, um, in the New Ideal, 
a few weeks ago, a few months ago, I think. It was one of the first uh, essays that went up on New Ideal, I think. Yeah, it's called uh, Finding Morality and Happiness Without God. It was, uh, Finding Morality and Happiness Without God. It's excellent. And then, of course, read The Virtue of Selfishness by Ayn Rand, the, the Objectivist uh, Morality or Ethics, which is the first essay in the book. And, uh, and you should definitely read that. But, but uh, objectivism has a objective moral, scientific-based moral code, right? That's, and that's, so it's not that life without morality, it's like with a morality, just a morality based on the facts of life and the, the fact that you choose to live. And, you know, if you don't choose to live, none of it applies. You know, As opposed to uh, edicts that you're supposed to accept on faith yep. that have no bearing whatsoever on your choices that that you're supposed to do just because and it's not if you want to achieve anything else it's just a it's a commandment and a categorical imperative and yep. i mean we're that's we're starting to see the well we've been seeing for thousands of years the fruits of that but it's particularly salient with this latest scandal I think. 